I'm Nate Blackman and I was the first principal of Metro High School. Uh, Metro is different from other schools and basically the fact that the students here have a, they put a lot of input into the school, have the freedom that goes around. You know, in other schools you got a study period, whereas here there's no study period for students whatsoever. You're basically free and you accept responsibility. And you're also subject to check, take out your own courses. You know, in a regular high school, you have to you know, program for your courses here. You select your own courses, you select your own time of going to school, and basically you're basically on your own. The classroom was Chicago, and the halls of, of Metro were the streets. Metro, the Chicago High School for Metropolitan Studies. Citywide in catchment area, citywide in curriculum content, citywide in educational vision. Metropolitan studies means what it says. Metro is a curriculum in the city and of the city. It uses the resources of the city to put together a contemporary urban program. The first time I came here, I always had the feeling that the whole city was mine and I could use it. One important um, asset that Metro has given me is I've sort of opened up a little more to learning. You know, it's, it's one thing to learn as it's dealt with in, in a regular high school. And it's another thing to want to learn or to know how to learn. Metro students are brash, colorful, and self-assured, as restlessly mobile as the city itself. They use Chicago as their classroom, picking up credits at a variety of locations all over the city. Metro existed in a, a particular time in history and a particular place. Shortly after Martin Luther King was assassinated, it was shortly after what's been called the police riot at the uh, 68 Democratic Convention. Out of the riots and the boycotts, people felt that something else had to be done to create a new type of school situation. The Urban Research Corporation made arrangements with Jim Redman, who was the superintendent, uh, to develop Metro. I was a principal of an elementary school, and it was advertised that uh, they were looking for a principal to go to a, a new school, and they were looking for someone who was supposed to be creative and innovative. And um, I was in this school, and I had changed some textbooks that had not been changed in a number of years, and that made me a very creative, innovative principal. And so the Urban Research Corporation came to interview me. Nate Blackman was just very open to all of the ideas. I mean, these were, for education, really uh, radical ideas about how to operate a school. So I took the approach, we will go ahead and create new things regardless of what happens. And, and that is the difference. There, there was nothing in my mind that I had to look f back and focus on thinking about, if I do this, this is going to happen, because we're all we're creating new stuff. The way that I ended up going to Metro was that uh, Metro had this lottery uh, that was available to all public uh, high school students. And uh, the lottery was meant to be a reflection of the demographics of the city and also draw students from different parts of, uh, of the city. I filled out this form and handed it in late and a couple weeks went by, the lottery happened, I didn't get a letter or anything. And then one evening, um, I got a call from a faculty member who uh, wanted to speak to me and was calling for Metro. And was I interested in going to Metro? And of course I said, yes, I was interested in going to Metro. When does it start? It starts tomorrow. Uh, you have to be downtown tomorrow at 9 o'clock. Uh, so the next day I was on the, on the uh, train heading downtown to go to, to Metro. The final thing I got from the, from the board before I got the job was, you can be creative. You can be innovative, but don't fail. I came here in January of 1970, and actually school started February the 2nd, 1970. And when the students came in, they, had, they were voicing their opinion. And the teachers were coming in, and since things weren't set in stone, they were voicing their opinion. And the parents that were sending the students had their opinions. And of course, Nate had an idea in his head of what he thought this would be, but the best thing was that everybody listened to each other. It's very little, little prejudice. I'm not gonna say there's none, but it's been narrowed down a great extent. 
and I feel that's really beautiful. Total freedom, total trust of everybody in Fountain School. We have a beautiful education system that's going to grow and other people are going to take this. It's going to develop into a worldwide thing and education is just going to be so great for many people. We were inventors, whatever you want to call it. We were inventors. We were creating new things, new designs. We were trying everything out. And so just go ahead and try it. And if it didn't work, set it aside and try something else. And so there was, there was no fear in us. There wasn't a question about why Metro existed or that Metro was an experiment. This was the way to learn. This is the way that we need to teach our youth. And Nate knew how to be a leader without being tapped down. He knew how to be a leader by example, by setting, by being an an amazing role model for all of us. And Judy Kwanbeck came in and she had this thing with the, with the counseling and she could write all over and, and get classes uh, taken and get students in, in college and everything. And then you had, um, like Lee came in as the assistant and he brought a, a, a compassion. Well, I like the fact that there are less students. The 350 students is a much closer feeling between students and teachers, more, more of a family kind of spirit. Uh, students come from all over the city, uh, different racial, ethnic, social backgrounds. These call us a maverick. That's, what, that's how we got the name Mavericks, because we walked around, we weren't arrogant, but we walked around like, we're going to try this and we're going to see if it works, and if it doesn't work, we're going to try something else. And we're not concerned about this here, we're concerned about students and education and staff. <laughs> then one day, I heard the students call Lucinda and Robin. And I say, what's going on? Well, we're going by first names now. I said, first names? I said, well, I'm Mr. Blackman. I'm the principal. I, hey, I don't know about no first names. Everyone, principal, assistant principal, teachers, students, should all be equal and on a first, by a first name basis. And when they got to call me Nate, oh no, God, boy, it was like, oh, hi Nate. And I better speak to them, you know, it was just that, that type of thing. We didn't have uh, titles, we didn't have Mrs. or Mr. or anything, we addressed you by Paula and the principal by Nate and others. You showed respect by your relationship and how you interacted with the person, not by some arbitrary title. And I never had an experience, of course, when you're on a first name basis with your teachers and the principal. So yeah, that was just totally different for me. And then the second year, I don't have the address, but it was on Plymouth Court um, near Jones Commercial. And back then, the south end of the loop was nothing but a bunch of peep shows and pawn shops and us. Yeah, we get up, I get up in the morning, I have breakfast, I get on the L, I go downtown, and I take the bus that goes to the museum campus and end up over at the aquarium. Don't forget to look inside of the operculum and take out a gill out of each specimen and place them out on the paper. As an ancillary teacher for Metro, I'm left pretty much to my own devices. I get communications to from Metro through the mail. I get a phone call once in a while. I have a roll sheet where I check off whether the kids were here or not and I mail that back. So the contact can be very little. I taught it by myself for a couple of cycles and now Mike is in helping me out. And I think that's probably the most successful way that we've done so far is to have sort of a team approach. We went through an interviewing process to become teachers at uh, Metro. So uh, I went through the interview. There were three teachers and two students interviewing four or five of us. And we sat in a circle and we answered questions. And I was so nervous, I put my hand under my leg so I wouldn't be shaking my hand. Uh, but I got through it, and then, lo and behold, they had us playing some game. And I got into the game. And I guess the game was to see how we reacted and uh, interacted with others. I was interviewed by basically students in the beginning. And I was a little leery. But when I found out that they really liked me and accepted me for who I happened to be, then I was ready to teach them. Um, my first day at Metro, 
I came out and I remember Nate was in the hall and I went up to him and I was smiling from ear to ear and I said, Nate, I just can't believe the students, they're so terrific. They ask questions, they challenge me, they, uh, they're funny. And he just nodded. He said, yeah, I know. All new teachers say that. Well, they're exciting students. They're students who choose to come and make a move and have, take initiative to do something different. So they, they are not the usual guide and rule uh, kind of student. I, I find them very interesting. Metro became the number one alternative school in the nation. And that was based on staff and the student body and what, what transpired. Students had the, they were given a catalog of all the various classes that were being offered and then they could choose. They knew that they had to fulfill certain requirements just like anybody else in Chicago public schools. But within that, they could cobble out a program that would fit their interests and their needs. And the, 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 the way we graded and, and students, uh, no, no A, B's or C's, it wasn't you were better than this. We, you were set in with the teacher. You're going back and forth as to give a, you know, credit or no credit to the student. They had to justify their reasonings why they were supposed to get credit and you had to justify why you were not going to give them credit. And this made everybody talk and, and it just made a talking session where people could get together. And Metro gave these students that chance to, to question anything, regardless of how well you liked the teacher or whatever it was, you had the right to ask. And this made teachers better teachers. What does that mean? Being on Michigan Avenue was a lot of fun. Every day was a field trip. Everyone likes field trips, and every day at Metro was a field trip because we were on buses and L's and seeing sights and people and talking and every day was an adventure. So every day I like going to school. I took a class that was held in the Indiana Dunes. The, the most important part of this program today is to, talk, is to have you uh, get involved in the program by making decisions or learning how to make decisions concerning land use policy. The land <laughs> is there and nature is set up in a certain way. It could be a red ocean dogwood. But it's either a sand cherry or a red ocean dogwood. I took um, black history with Shelby Taylor for two years. Most of our black studies classes are held here at the Center for Inner City Studies. We are trying to uh, teach youngsters to think, to be politically aware, to know who they are and who they are in response to other people, how they fit into things, and what they ought to be about in terms of their life goals. I believed in uh, Martin Luther King a lot. I didn't know too much about Malcolm X until I started taking this class. I didn't know that he didn't believe so much in what King, you know, said. I always thought that they were, like, together, you know, like everything. I never knew that, you know, he was really against what Martin Luther King was doing. So when I started at Metro, I decided to take a pottery class with Carol Block. And that was held at Jane Addams Hall House and Belmont and Broadway. I took pottery every single quarter for four years. So I was hooked. Now I'm a professional potter. I sell in galleries, I sell in art fairs, and I love it. I loved all of my time at Metro. I was in 33 East Congress, the only building I've ever known. Mm -hmm from 1980 until 1984. What I remember most about 33 East Congress is the setting itself, because it was in a high-rise building. There never was the same standard kind of day at Metro. And then that we didn't have an end that our gymnasium was Grant Park, you'd see fleets of people trekking out to the park and trekking out in, in soccer gear and what have you. I was on the softball team. Yes. I, I, woo. Steve, I believe, was uh, overseeing that. And we had a good, good run when I was there. The Metro, being the school without walls, uh, indirectly told this inner city kid who had never been outside of his community, frankly, before I came to Metro, told me that the whole learning process was beyond the school. When I elected to take the Second City course, I had never been that far north in my life. Didn't know North Avenue and Piper's Alley and all that even existed. The point of the class was it was an improvisation class. You, now, you, now we're all trees and you began to be treated. And it's cold. And so that whole piece and it taught you to get uh, 
I'll say uh, besides yourself, some people say get over yourself. <laughs> Barry was very, very knowledgeable when it came to math, and he was very encouraging. He was just one of those kind of men that was like, look, you don't understand it, come here. We'll, we'll work with you, you know, come on, and he'll break it down for you. Yeah, but all our teachers, literally, very, very connected to the students. And then we were, the last place we were at was on Wendell, uh, which was a very small facility and took us away from the loop. As I say, Metro was an experience that was always about change. And I think that um, when Nina arrived, we had been sort of, uh, uh, sort of shocked at the fact that uh, Nate was actually really gone. But what we were left with was the confidence of the program, confidence of what we did. So we did what we did. We did not change because someone else was coming. And what I appreciated about Nina is that she, she didn't make any, any moves for about the first year because she was able to sit back. And I think once she found out how we connected with the students, I think it was then where she came in and made her niche. And I thought that was positive and good. But then we uh, had a new person on board, Barbara McKinney. She came in and she did great plays. It's that kind of atmosphere in Metro. We have a, really a family kind of relationship. With the, we're not quite mothers to them, but we're sometimes a lot more than teachers to them. Some courses that I taught seem to just strike a hit with the kids. For example, uh, script writing, where we, we wrote our scripts, then we performed them. And she would come in and everybody would just run to their chairs automatically because they would know Bob is ready to teach. We first started out as being experimental. Uh -huh. And then later on we were considered alternative. And this is symptomatic of alternative schools. They begin to move more towards the tradition as time goes on. When Metro was demoted to being a program, it went to Crane. The doors are now closed at Metro High School, but many of its students showed up anyway. The school at Wendell and Wells on the near north side has been a base for kids taking classes throughout the central part of the city. My grandkid, the one who's been here for three years, he enjoyed coming here. He felt free coming here because there was no gang violence here. He would get up every morning, get dressed, and come to school with some dignity. And I can't tell you more that the odds for a young African-American male from Inglewood, the odds were stacked against me, as is evidenced by many of my friends today, against me as I returned every night to my community, um, that uh, Metro really played a critical part in keeping me moving forward and, and letting me know that the world, again, was beyond the four rooms, walls, beyond my community and beyond sort of my own measure of what was possible. I had to keep dreaming. Metro, my, my mind is up. I'm Nirvana. My friends, the teachers, I felt that we were one big family. People literally cared. So it wasn't just you just showing up to school and it's like, okay, you're here, you're sitting down and you just go about your business. People literally cared. Metro was, was, was a home, it was a community, it was everything to everybody. And that just came about by us all coming together and working as one. <laughs> Thank you.